very basis of all life on Earth is DNA. It is the instruction manual in each living cell, containing all the information required for its life. But DNA is only the code for life, like a recipe in a cookbook. While it is essential for life, other components are responsible for the functionality. These components that turn the code for life into life itself includes RNA and proteins. But how does the code of DNA become a functional process? How is this process regulated? And how can manipulating the process be used to create plants that are resistant to disease? For the functional material of a cell to be made, which are proteins, DNA must first be used to make RNA. DNA is like the recipe in a cookbook. While you need it to make something delicious, like a cake, it does not make the cake itself. In a cell, RNA is the cook. It reads the recipe and then goes and makes the cake. And it keeps making cake. But a cell, like you, can't have too much of a good thing. You wouldn't want too much cake, and cells don't want too much of a particular protein. So a cell needs to be able to control the production of a protein. In order to control this production, a cell can't just go and get rid of the recipe. Otherwise, the cook could not make cake again. And just because you are sick of cake doesn't mean you won't want it again. This is why there needs to be a way to get the cook to stop making cake. And to do this, cells fire the cook. Cells do this by making this thing called double-stranded RNA, which goes and fires the cook. And if a cell wants cake again, they will hire a new chef who will make them more cake. In a cell, this process is called RNA interference. Now there is another layer to this story, which in my opinion, makes it really interesting. This is how this process of eliminating the RNA, or the cook, preventing more proteins from being made, becomes a useful way to create disease-resistant plants. RNA interference, or RNAi for short, is found in most living cells, including bacteria, fungi, and even people. And this mechanism can be induced in one cell by another cell, causing the first cell to fire its own cook and stop making cake. In my research, I am trying to make a fungus to stop making cake. The fungus in question is Dollar Spot, which is the largest economic burden for golf courses, costing them thousands of dollars a year. Dollar Spot creates small brown lesions in turf. The major problem with Dollar Spot is that it has grown resistant to three of the four kinds of fungicides that are used to combat it, making it harder and more expensive to treat. For small golf courses, this is a problem, as over 60% of golf courses either lose money or are only able to break even each year. My lab has found that a group of proteins in Dollar Spot function like a pump, pumping fungicides that get inside Dollar Spot out so that the Dollar Spot is not affected by it. This pretty much makes it resistant to treatment. This is why I am trying to make a grass which can fire the cook which makes the transport protein in Dollar Spot. This would help golf courses spend less money to treat Dollar Spot. You may ask why we are putting effort into making it so that we continue to use the same fungicides again and again. I mean, why not just make a new fungicide? The answer to that question is that fungi that are already resistant to one kind of fungicide can become resistant to a new kind faster. This means that if it took 10 years for the fungus to become resistant to the current treatment, it may only take 8 years for it to become resistant to the next one, and then 5 to the one after that. Before long, it would be extremely difficult to treat Dollar Spot and to develop new treatments to it. So my research will hopefully help to delay this process. If you have any questions about my research, email me at the address on the screen, and come see the results of my research at the Undergraduate Research Fair on April 22nd. Thank you. Hey.